Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explain in detail on two uh, objective questions and answer. So here most important questions and that will be help to clear GATT, UPSC, GPSC and all the PSU examination. So let us start with the question number one. The ability of the material to resist softening at high temperature is known as option A creep. Option B hot tempering, option C hot hardness, option D fatigue. So basically creep may be defined as a time dependent deformation at elevated temperature and constant stress. Where tempering is a process of heat treating which is used to increase the toughness of iron based alloy. Where hot hardness or you can say red hardness that will be corresponds to hardness of a material at higher temperature. Where weakness in metals or you can say other materials caused by repeated variations of the stress. So that will be known as a fatigue. So as per the ability of the material to resist softening at high temperature. So which will be known as a hot hardness. So the right answer is option C. The next question. Mild steel belongs to the following category. Option A low carbon steel, option B medium carbon steel, option C high carbon steel and option D alloy steel. So mild steel is a type of carbon steel with a low amount of carbon. So it is actually known as a low carbon steel. So the right answer is option A low carbon steel. The next question. A material is known as allotropic or polymorphic if it option A has a fixed structure under all conditions option B exists in several crystals formed at different temperatures option C responds to heat treatment and option D none of the above. So basically allotropy means different crystal structures exist at different temperature. So that would be known as a allotropy. So the right answer is the material that will be having a several crystal structures form at different temperature. So option B. The next question. The following types of materials are usually the most ductile. Option A. Face centered cubic lattice. Option B. Body centered cubic lattice. Option C. Hexagonal close pack lattice. And option D. All of the above. So basically face centered cubic lattice are most ductile materials. So the right answer is option A. The next question pure iron is the structure of A ferrite, option B perlite, option C austenite and option D all of the above. So basically pure iron is the structure of ferrite or you can say as per the iron carbon diagram it will be alpha ferrite. So it forms alpha ferrite structure. So right answer is option A. The next question in grey cast iron carbon is present in form of A cementite, option B free carbon, option C flex and option D spheroids. So basically in grey cast iron most of the carbon is present in form of graphite flex. So which makes the material softer, more machinable and less brittle as compared to a white cast iron. So the right answer is option C in the form of flex. The next question in nodular cast iron graphite in the form of option A cementite, option B free carbon, option C flex and option D spheroids. So basically in nodular cast iron most of the carbon is present in form of spheroids or you can say nodules. So just you can see the microstructures. So these carbons it will be in the form of the nodules. So which will be round shapes it will be indication as a nodules. So or you can say spheroids. So the right answer is option D. The next wrought iron is option A hard. Option B high in strength, option C high resistance to corrosion and option D all of the above. So basically wrought iron having a high resistance to corrosion. So 
right answer is option C. The next question, annealing of white cast iron result in production of option A, malleable iron, option B, nodular iron, option C, spheroidal iron, and option D, all of the above. So, annealing of white cast iron result in the production of malleable irons. So, the right answer is option A. The next question, maximum percentage of carbon in ferrite is option A 0.025%, option B 0.06%, option C 0.1% and option D 0.25%. So, just you can see this is an iron carbon diagram. So, here the maximum percentage of carbon is ferrite. So just you can see at this area. So at a eutectoid temperature range around 723 degrees centigrade and the maximum solubility of carbon into iron at this temperature range and that will be 0.025 percentage to form a alpha phase or you can say alpha ferrite. So the maximum solubility of the carbon into iron at a eutectoid temperature range and it forms a alpha ferrite. So that will be 0.025 percentage. So the right answer is option A, 0.025 percentage of carbon in ferrite. The next question, hardness of steel depends on option A, amount of carbon it contains. Option B, the shape and distributions of carbides in iron. Option C, methods of fabrications. And option D, all of the above. So basically, hardness of the steels depends on to the shape and distributions of carbides in iron. So, right answer is option B. The next question. Maximum percentage of carbon in austenite is option A 0.025 percentage, option B 0.26 percentage, option C 1.7 percentage and option D 0.25 percentage. So the exploration, just you can see the iron carbon diagram. So the maximum percentage of carbon in austenite. So basically austenite that will be formed above the eutectoid temperature line or you can say above 723 and the maximum solubility of carbon into iron to form austenite and that will be around here for this diagram it will be indication as a 2.06 percentage or you can say it will be around this composition line. So the right answer is if the diagram it will be more specified so maximum that will be 2 percent so as per this given options it will be maximum 1.7 percentage so that will be nearer to this value but practically as from the diagram it will be up to 2 percentage. So here the maximum relative value for 2 percentage that will be 1.7 so it would be 1.7 percentage. The next question, depth of hardness of steel is increased by addition of option A nickel, option B chromium, option C tungsten and option D vanadium. Then depth of the hardness of the steel is increased by addition of chromium. So the right answer is B chromium. Then next question, railway rails are normally made of option A mild steel, option B alloy steel, option C high carbon steel and option D cast iron steels. So basically railways are normally made of high carbon. So the right answer is option C that will be made with a high carbon materials. The next question, you take to it steel contains following percentage of carbon. Option A 0.8 percentage, option B 0.3 percentage, 
ऑप्शन सी 1.2 पॉइंट टू परसेंटेज एंड ऑप्शन डी 2.5 पॉइंट फाइव परसेंटेज सो एस पर द आयन कार्बन डायग्राम द यू टेक टॉइड मीन्स द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इट विल बी अकर्स फ्रॉम यू टेक टॉइड पॉइंट सो एस पर द आयन कार्बन डायग्राम यू टेक टॉइड मीन्स एट जीरो पॉइंट एट परसेंटेज ऑफ कार्बन एंड अराउंड सेवन ट्वेंटी थ्री डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड सो डेट पॉइंट इट विल बी एक्ट एज अड पॉइंट सो That point eight percentage of carbon is being present into the iron, so that all it will be considering as a eutectoid steels. So as from the iron carbon diagram, the right answer is a point eight percentage. The next question: Solder is an alloy consisting of option A tin and copper, option B tin and lead, option C. tin antimony and copper and option d lead and copper so basically solder is an alloy consisting with tin and copper so the right answer is option a the next question an engineer's hammer is made of option a cast iron option b forged steel option c mild steel and option d high carbon steel so an engineer's hammer which will be made with a high carbon steel so that will be a right answer is option d high carbon steel the next question carbon in iron is an example of option a substitutional solid solution option b interstitial solid solutions option c intermetallic compounds and option d all of the above so basically carbon in iron is an example of interstitial solid solutions because in an interstitial solid solutions both the size of the atoms of the solvent and solute which will be different so basically the solute which will be having a smaller size as compared to solvent so in case of the iron carbon diagram the carbon that will be added into the iron and the size of the atoms of the carbon which will be smaller as compared to iron so that will be act as a interstitial solid solutions so the right answer is option b that will be the interstitial solid solution of carbon into iron the next question brass the alloy of the copper zinc is an example of option a substitutional solid solution option b interstitial solid solution option c intermetallic compounds and option d all of the above so basically brass or you can say alloy of copper and nickel which will be example of substitutional solid solutions because of both the size of the atoms of the copper and zinc it will be almost same so which will be form a substitutional solid solutions so in case of the brass it forms substitutional solid solutions so the right answer is option a then last question these locations in materials refers to the following types of defect option a point defect option b line defect option c plane defect and option d none of the above so basically these locations into the material refers to a line defect so the right answer is option b that will be line defect so i hope you understand this all questions if you like this then subscribe and share modi mechanical engineering tutorials thank you so much and keep watching